this is Anne. She's come along specially to meet you, so I do hope you'll like each other. Her full name's Angora, and she lives with her brothers and sisters at Rabbitsville, where they don't care so much about the bricks as the straw. Their food mainly is chopped hay and wheat, with an occasional lettuce and other bits of green stuff. But you see, Anne's people are rather aristocratic, and so very particular as to what they eat and drink. New babies, sometimes eight at once, come along about three times a year. Soft and warm little bundles of wool, all ears and whiskers, and as timid as, well, as timid as tiny rabbits. And the really nicest ones have feathers on their ears and pink eyes. Anne's luxurious coat is brushed regularly to prevent it from becoming matted. Constant beauty treatment is necessary if the fine wool is to remain in good condition. At least once a year, Anne and her friends have to perform a kind of striptease act with the help of electric shears. Where there's a wool, there's a very quick way, and the result is heaps softer than fleece. Anne has finished her act and looks a bit sorry for herself, while the young man feeds her shed garments to the carding machine where the wool is teased out lock by lock, fibre by fibre, and strand by strand, so that a soft, downy sliver is the result. Rollers now take the place of the flat boards covered with teeth that used to serve when all the carding or combing was done by hand. The wool is carried into the machine on a travelling lattice, and a series of rollers strips it finer and finer until it emerges in the form of thread. In the case of Angora wool, these are made up of lengths or staples of about six inches, the length of a good rabbit's coat. The wool is wound onto bobbins and then onto frames from which the skeins are made up. And when the wool is made into garments, it looks even better on this lady than it did on Angora. <laughs> 